Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. So it's just not another rail system in some city. You know you're in Hawaii. Images from traditional Hawaiian culture adorn the columns of Oahu's rail system, but opponents of the rail project ask, How much lipstick are you going to put on that pig? Plus, a Maui Ohana continues a cherished family tradition, despite the passing of their beloved matriarch. Learn how to pack a very special type of care package for people who serve our country. And life lessons from a Kona High School graduate who went on to conquer the world of heavy metal reggae. See how Hawaii high school students embrace and celebrate diversity. And meet a Maui high school student athlete who proves that he has a big heart in more ways than one. You'll also learn about some of the beautiful works of art that grace the campuses of schools in this episode of the nation's first statewide student news network. Hiki no can do. Welcome to Kapolei High School, located on the west side of Oahu. We are hearing from Kapolei's newest artistic edition, designed by Kapolei alumnus Nakisha Harris. This mural was painted by the hands of hundreds of Kapolei students and overseen by John Hina of 808 Urban. The mural itself tells the story of Kapolei and Makakilo, from the first settlers to their current expansion. Speaking of storytelling, our story comes from Kapolei, where students notice some designs on the rail pillars that do just that, tell the stories of Hawaii. Wherever you are in Kapolei, it's impossible to miss the rail. It's also impossible to find someone who doesn't have an opinion about the rail. I don't really think the rail is that good because it costs a lot of money. I agree with the building of the rail because I really think it'll help the traffic problem here on the island. I feel like rail won't really help Hawaii's traffic problem. Considering how much population we have here, I feel like rail won't make that big of a difference. But unless you look closely, you may have missed these. Molded designs in the rail that according to Hart spokesman Bill Brennan... Well, you know, we, we do it with um, some respect for our host culture. He says that the designs are meant to serve as an homage to Hawaii. So here in East Kapolei, this is kind of a, a story about the Hono Uli Uli Ahu Pua'a. And in each of the aesthetic columns, you'll see them divided basically into three sections. So one is the sky, one is the earth, and one is the sea. UH professor and infrastructural engineer Panos Prevederos agrees on the importance of such acknowledgments. It's very important when we do massive infrastructure projects uh, to put uh, local art on them. This is a, it, is a common, uh, it is a common application that uh, they do in this state and in many other states. However, he finds other issues with the rail design. For the, about 10% of the system that has been built, we only see columns and the guideway. I think the uglier part of the rail will be the 21 Si 21 stations, which are roughly the size of a football field, 30 feet up in the air. In fact, he even asks, How much lipstick are you going to put on that pig? But Hart executives believe that the designs created by local architect Daniel Kanekuni are a reflection of the natural beauty that once adorned our island and also make our rail system unique. So it's just not another rail system in some city. You know you're in Hawaii, and we pay deference and respect to, to the host culture. Whether the rail will be an effective mode of transportation has yet to be determined. That story is ongoing. However, the stories of Hawaii will forever be told on these pillars. From Kapolei High School, this is Audrey Salazar for Hiki no. Hiki no is on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hiki no Can Do. Aloha. Welcome to Maiwaia Intermediate, located in central Maui. Our school is made up of a diverse population, and one of the ways we honor this is through the artwork on our campus. The flower mural on our front building is a tribute to the many cultures our school embraces. Each flower represents a student group, from the Sanfigita, which is the national flower of the Philippines, 
to the hollow of the Marshall Islands and all the blossoms between. It was created by artist Bob Flint. Kiki No Students, in our media program, produced the following video about an annual mochi pounding event that shows the importance of tradition and community. The process of making mochi consists of steaming and pounding sweetened rice to create a Japanese dessert that brings good luck to the new year. But really, sharing this tradition creates something even sweeter, memories and community. For the past 27 years, Carolyn and Tom Fujita have hosted the annual mochi pounding at their home in Kahului, Maui. Okay, we, we started really small in 1985. We pounded like 50 pounds, maybe a little less than 50 pounds of mochi. And now we pound a little over 200 pounds of mochi. But this event does not plan itself. Every single year we've been doing mochi pounding. Um, Grandpa spends maybe a lot of his time preparing for it with the mallets. He puts up the tents, he puts out all the chairs, he cleans the tables, he rearranges our house. Um, he does all kinds of stuff just to prepare for this. He does it every year. This year's preparation has been more difficult because on November 28th, Carolyn, Tom's wife, sadly passed away. Mrs. Fujita was our matriarch. I mean, she, she and her husband were pretty much the, uh, our, our, our group leaders. Uh, they took the lead in, in getting, the, getting this together. It's different because she's not here. We miss her today, uh, this year because she used to do so much things, uh, help me shop and help me plan for one thing, the menu. She, she has a lot of, a lot of input, <laughs> uh, making the menu. People come together from as far as the mainland to celebrate this tradition. Everybody's not Buddhist, but you still have the tradition. And the tradition continues in the way of fellowship and continues in the way of, you know, giving some mochi that you just found it to your neighbors and have them share in that, in that joy of doing this, this kind of work. It's more than tradition. Uh, when I grew up, we used to pound mochi, and mostly family. So that's carrying on the tradition, but for me, it's getting together and a lot of friends, every relative. I see it only once a year, and this is it over here. This annual gathering to bring in the new year has shaped the younger generation. Um, so when Grandpa can't do uh, mochi pounding anymore. I'm hoping that me and my brothers and my generation will be able to pursue our, you know, our goals and dreams and then it'll be our turn. Although Carolyn is not there to celebrate the annual mochi pounding, her spirit still lingers. I'm sure she is looking down on us and maybe that's why it's clearing up and this morning the wind died down. So I'm sure she's helping with us with that too, yeah. This is Hannah Okamoto from Iwana Intermediate School for Hiki no. Next, students from Hawaii Technology Academy on Oahu will show you how to pack a very specific type of care package for people who appreciate receiving one more than just about anyone in the world. There are currently 49,347 soldiers that reside in Hawaii. Active duty soldiers can be deployed for months to years at a time. When deployed, they do not get to see their families often. At HTA, we have many military families. Today, we are going to show you how to send a military care package to a loved one that's overseas. A care package can be used to bring comforts from home to those who are away. First, find a cardboard box to put all the things to send in. Make sure it's a sturdy one that doesn't have any holes. Second, buy and collect any item you want to include in your package, such as magazines for entertainment, food that you can only get from home, and family photos. One way to remind family members of home is to send photos. Include a few in your package. Third, bubble wrap any fragile items before putting them into the box. This will secure the item so it won't break while being mailed. Fourth, put the heaviest items in first and lay it at the bottom. Then, put the lighter things on the top to make sure that nothing is crushed while the box is being shipped. Fifth, 
Add a filler, such as styrofoam or newspaper, needed to secure any fragile items. Finally, be sure to get the correct address of where your loved one is being deployed to. Tape the top of the box, take to the post office, and it's on its way. Now you know how to send a military care package. Stay tuned after the show to find out what students who created this how-to video learned from their experience. We're here on the campus of Konawana High School, located on the leeward side of the Big Island of Hawaii. Behind me is the mural entitled Bridging the Pacific. Made in 2006, the mural celebrates the relationship of Hawaii's sister island, Okinawa. The center of the mural was inspired by the print called The Great Wave of Kanagawa, designed by Hoku Sai. The circular design of the mural emphasizes the connection both islands have to the Pacific Ocean and to each other. It is surrounded by the abundance of the sea life it supports that can be found off the shores of Okinawa and Hawaii. In the upper left hand corner, a Hawaiian petroglyph of a paddler, the word for waving kanji, and the symbol for Okinawa is depicted. The mural is made of 256 tiles painted by Konawana students. On the dedication plaque, one can read Steve Irwin's name, ocean conservationist and wildlife warrior. Nicknamed the Crocodile Hunter, he was tragically killed by a stingray during the painting of this mural. As with Okinawa and Hawaii, Steve had great respect for the ocean and will be forever connected to it. The following story by students at Konawana High School is about Brett Bollinger and his journey to become a successful musician. Believe it or not, this is my first time ever being inside of this music hall in this class. I never took a music class in my life. I know, you're making that face like, are you serious? What do you do for a living? Uh, music. As a Konawana High School student, Brett Bollinger never studied music, but that didn't stop him from becoming a singer, songwriter, and bass guitarist in the popular rock reggae band Pepper. He's performed all over the world with his two bandmates, Kaleo Wasman and Yasad Williams, also Konawana graduates. On a recent visit back to Hawaii Island, Bollinger shared his journey with music students at his alma mater. Our first show ever happened at our graduation party in, from our high school. And so everything that happened to me, fortunately, was very organic. And essentially, all that really means is something that's very cliche, and that's I was just doing what I loved. And at that moment, it was music, it was entertainment. I didn't know how to play music, so therefore I felt even, even farther away from the rules. Oh, that's not how you play reggae. Oh, that's not how you play heavy metal. I don't know. It's whatever I want it to be. It's my art form. And once I learned to take pride in what I was doing, not just having fun, that's very important, but once I started going, wow, nobody in the world sounds like me. Nobody in the world has my voice. Nobody in the world has my band members that I love to death and that I'm out here working so hard to go play for people in, in Europe and South America and Australia and Japan. I've handled tons and tons and tons of rejection all through my career. Even today I got a phone call about something that I was looking forward to that hasn't yet come to fruition. If it doesn't happen, I don't look at it like the door is closed. I look at it as like, I have to work much harder to make it happen. It inspires me to go, oh my God, I did that. I've been working on that for two years or one, one minute, doesn't matter. And I did that and I had fun doing it. That's been the key for me is enjoying what I do. My backup plan for music was to do music. In anything, in my opinion, I don't think you should ever go into it looking like you need a backup plan. I think if you're passionate about what, what you're doing and you believe in yourself and you're working hard, you should build on top of how much natural talent you have. And then the other question is, why are you doing this? Are you doing it for the right reasons? Are you doing it just to make money? That's okay. Are you doing it to impress somebody? Are you trying to pick up a chick or something like that? That's okay too, but if you have true passions and it's you're doing it for yourself, you're gonna have the best time in the world and you don't need any backup plans. 
If you really want to be a musician or an entertainer or someone in the creative, you really have to leave all your doubts and your worries behind. Because if you don't believe in yourself, no one else is going to at all. This is General Lim from Konawana High School for Hikino. Aloha and welcome to Moanalua High School, located in the Salt Lake area of Honolulu on the island of Oahu. Behind me is the most infamous mural on our campus that encompasses what artist Patrick Ching calls the grace of Moanalua. Hanging in the school cafeteria, this mural features a girl with the wind swirling around her. In the wind, there are elements of growing up in the Moanalua area like birds, frogs, and the ocean waves. Patrick Ching, a 1980 graduate of Moanalua High School, painted this mural his senior year, which helped start his career as an artist and now a children's book author. Hikino students in our media class produced the following story about high school lesbian couple Rebecca Garcia and Danielle Warden and their pride in being different. We want to inspire, to encourage others um, to know and to feel comfortable, um, just to be who they are. That's it. Just to, it's, it's okay. On October 22, 2016, people walked hand in hand wearing vibrant outfits through the streets of Waikiki to celebrate Hawaii's lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer pride month. I think that's fantastic and it's even, even more special when we, when we have a Pride Day to celebrate it and everybody gets together and just is themselves. I think it's excellent. I think it's a great opportunity not only for people here at Pride but people in our country to celebrate diversity. About 15,000 people of different races, ages and sexualities gather to strengthen and support the rights of the LGBTQ community. Moanalua High School students and couple Rebecca Garcia and Danielle Warden stood proudly among the crowd. It gives us strength because we know that we can always rely on each other. And even though we are all different, that isn't a bad thing. As I went to the prayer, like, wow, like, I'm not, I'm like accepted. It just makes me feel happy because like, no one looks at me strange. We look for people who've gone through the same experiences, have had the same struggles, have had the same rewards. And it's nice to know that there are other people out there going through the same thing as you. With over 10,000 LGBTQ-identified youth in the nation, there are over 400 youth groups that offer support for students like Rebecca and Danielle to help them overcome any struggles of being confident in who they are. Because when you grow up, like, all the couples you see are like a man and a woman. So like, when you find out you're like gay, you just feel really out of place. My friends do give me strength because there's someone to talk to when you're like at the low. But I think the fact that they're part of the LGBT group as well means that we're like, we have similar problems, but that it's like easier to talk to them. I have friends who are pansexual, I have friends who are bisexual, I have friends who are gay, I have friends who are straight. And I think in particular, my friends who are queer as well, we kind of look for, you know, birds of a feather flock together. Even though we're all different, we can still, we're still all the same. And we can still confide in each other. Even though they have the strong support of each other, they still have to face the harsh realities of society. We've come so far, but people still want to hate. I want them to like just accept us. Because like, it's none of their business, because like, our relationship doesn't affect them in any way. So I'm hoping that in the future, because you know we're kind of spreading more information about it, and we're being more open with it, that it'll kind of die off. With such a diverse LGBTQ community, people like Rebecca and Danielle will continue to find their strength in their differences to be equal like everyone else. This is Jocelyn Bonilla from Moanlo High School for Hiki No. We're here on the Maui High School campus in Kahului, Maui. Behind me is an original sculpture, A Path Through the Trees, created by Satoru Abe to represent the abundance of trees from the former Maui High School campus. Abe was born and raised in Honolulu, Hawaii, and became a painter and sculptor after moving to New York City to study the arts. He drew inspiration from nature, especially trees, and how their branches interconnect with one another. Abe then moved back to the Hawaiian Islands in 1950 and began experimenting on copper projects such as the 1977 sculpture here on the campus of Maui High School. Students from Maui High School have produced a feature story on one of my classmates who was sidelined earlier this year. Instead of quitting the team, Ben Osmond decided to take on a leadership role within our football team. 
So there's a joke between my friends um, that I have a big heart. It's actually pretty funny. Entering his senior football season at Maui High School, Benjamin Osman was blindsided by a hidden opponent. Ben was at his doctor's office getting his yearly routine physical. He monitored my heartbeat and he found that I had like a heart murmur and all that fun stuff. And then eventually the cardiologist had to say that I'm done with sports. According to the Children's Cardiomyopathy Foundation, over 100,000 teens in the U.S. alone have an enlarged heart and hypertension. If left untreated, this can lead to sudden cardiac arrest and death. Last year, over 50 teens in the U.S. died because their cardiomyopathy went undetected. When Ben first came and told us um, that he won't be able to play this season, it's very heartbreaking for us. Knowing Ben, we played since eighth grade up into our senior year and we thought, yeah, this is the year we're gonna shine and it's time for us to become the MIO champs we were meant to be. And for his season to cut short, it was just, it took a toll on all of us. Ben knew he had to find a way to rewrite his own playbook, one without his dreams of playing at the next level. My life before was more football oriented and everything was about sports. I was expecting to play college football. I now it's slightly different. Although sidelined, Ben and his coaches found a different way to keep him on the field, even if he could no longer anchor the offensive line. So I, I asked him to remain on, and I asked him, I want you to be there, kind of as, as an assistant coach, because he knows what we do, he's smart. Ben's dedication on the sidelines earned him the honor of representing his team as a captain at his final homecoming game in hopes of inspiring the rest of the team. For Ben, just being there, he gives us something to fight for and something to motivate us. You know, Coach Hirota, he would always say or tell us, play like every play is your last. And Ben was a prime example of that, how in the blink of an eye, his career was cut short. Though Ben's medical problems were hard for him to process at first, he quickly found a way to cope rather than dwell on his situation. Yes, I'm leveling a playing field by taking uh, something that happened to me and just coming to peace and accepting the fact that it's happened to me. Luckily, I'm able to come back and even though I can't play college football, at least my grades are very good now and actually have a chance to go to college. Who knows, I might actually try and get an opportunity to help coach. Though Ben isn't leading his teams to victories on the field anymore physically, his dedication to the Sabre football program has leveled the playing field for himself and those around him. This is Sydney Green for Maui High School for Hiki No. Well, we've come to the end of this episode of Hiki No. Remember, all of these stories were written, edited, and shot by students like us. We hope you have enjoyed watching them as much as we have enjoyed sharing them with you. Stay tuned after the show to find out what some students learned while working on this show. More proof that Hawaii students hiki no can do. Stay tuned after the credits to find out what some students learn from their hiki no experience. It's an important lesson to learn to depend on other people besides yourself. I'm a very independent person. I like to get things done by myself, but it's not always feasible to do it by myself. In the video, How to Pack a Military Care Package, I was the director, editor, and I was an actor. I was the camera person. My role in the video was to make sure the scene was set. What I learned most from this Hikino experience was working better with other people, 
and learning to accept feedback and criticism from other people. Because they understand they have to work together, they are more careful in the way that they talk to each other. I try to let other people do their jobs and take better command of the video. He gave me the freedom and because he was on camera, he couldn't direct as much. So even though we had a set list of shots, I kind of like played off my eye and did whatever shots I thought would be best for the video. It's an important lesson to learn to depend on other people besides yourself. I'm a very independent person. I like to get things done by myself, but it's not always feasible to do it by myself. It's better to work in a group of people rather than just by yourself because they have a different perspective of what is going on, so they can give their input and their opinion on it. And after talking it out and whatnot, then you guys can agree on something. The bond with your crew, <laughs> like it's really important to have a good relation with them, because if you don't, then the video suffers. I'm glad that we were able to work together on this. Although it was a long shoot and a long production, we put the effort in and we got completed rather than giving up. I just feel happy that um, all of the hard work that the students put into their video pays off in the end. That all of the things that I'm encouraging them to do has an outcome that they can look back on and feel proud of. Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.